Kiwanis is a character. It's very New York. It's, you know, it's gritty. It's um, trying to get back on its feet. Uh, it's been knocked down. It smells. <laughs> I was hanging out with uh, an ex-girlfriend one, I guess a Saturday afternoon, and we would go on sort of day trips together a lot, and uh, she wanted to know if I wanted to go to the Gowanus, and I'd never been to the Gowanus before. I was born in Brooklyn, Williamsburg, and I grew up in Brooklyn, but I, it's a big borough, and I'd never been to Gowanus. We came over here, and we just drove up one of the streets to the northern part of the canal, and uh, Right there, this kind of oil was boiling up, and I started photographing. I had a point-and-shoot camera, a small Lumix. I made about 15 photographs. That was the extent of it, and I put it away, and I'd forgotten about it. In 2014, I got a, uh, an email from uh, Nico Compel, the editor of the album, which was a photo gallery that was published in the Sunday Times. I said I took some photos at the Gowanus, and it would be enough to put together a gallery and he put it in the album and published it. And uh, a couple of uh, other media outlets picked it up, published it. I think just maybe put this one a little closer, and that's it. The projects I do, they're pretty much pictures of uh, fringe groups that I had done for the years before that. I photographed uh, people who were abducted by aliens and um, uh, homeless kids living in Tompkins Square Park in Manhattan, right around the corner from me. Courthouse Confessions. I photographed prostitutes in a brothel in Nevada. Those projects are, are very debilitating. They take a lot out of you. I hung out with these homeless kids. Most of them were drug addicts. So I was looking for something that was more uplifting, a little bit more, uh, um, a, a, a bit different. I kept coming back to the Guanas, trying to find the same spot to photograph in. And the bubbling oil had sort of disappeared and they had put a dock over the spot. Maybe they were trying to cover it up. I would photograph in the spring 2014. There was a lot of rains and the rain caused a lot of runoff and a lot of uh, this uh, surface pollution that I photographed. And I started making a lot of the images that you'll see in the show here today. And if you put that right across the bottom, then we go all the way across the other side. I think people get different things from this. I think a lot of people see an environmental disaster when they see these pictures. Yes, it's an environmental disaster, but to make pictures that look beautiful from an environmental disaster is sort of, it's sort of a weird thing to do, I guess. When things started to resemble reality in my photographs, in this particular case, I, I won't photograph them. I'll step back and go, no, I don't want people to know this is really water. I don't want people to really know this is pollution. I sat down with a seven-year-old child once who looked at my newest project, and she would look at each picture, and she would see dinosaurs and giraffes and children in trees and things like that. So it's, you know, it's all in the eyes of the beholder. People see outer space photographs, galaxies, um, you know, certain artists. I mean, everybody sees something different. You have to look at the pictures yourself and determine what you get from them. The 60s, you know, psychedelic era of the 60s, I would say. You know, uh, a lot of light shows and, um, you know, psychedelic imagery and things like that from the 60s. I think a lot of that comes from my background. I mean, there are very few places left in new New York that are old New York. And the Gowanus is one of them. It's kind of cool. And I'll come back again this spring in the next couple of weeks, uh, as soon as it starts raining, hopefully, a lot. <laughs>